of the Hive. Chapter 5, Part 2. Cadista tried to search her fellow royals for any unusual glances at Twilight. No. Back when Salandris was barely out of the shell, summits used to last for months, sometimes years. Time means rather little to long-lived beings such as us. However, Salandris hated it, and as soon as she could, she forcibly cut down on all the bickering and political maneuvering of the summit. Part of that plan was to forbid food or drink so that decisions would be reached out in hours instead of years. Wait, is that why we didn't have breakfast? Aside from our love requirements, yes. Salandris called out as the last of the twenty queens sat down. The summit of the queens is now in session. She glared at the younger royals until they quieted down. We are here to discuss the blatant violation of one of our most sacred principles and best defense. Not to mention the invalidation of my hive's work for the past thousand years and that of my predecessors since the times before Discord. She turned a baleful glare at Chrysalis. What say you? The Black Queen hovered over the south side of the bowl. I acted in everyone's best interests with my assault on Canterlot. My plan was to capture the entirety of the city's population and prevent any news of the attack from ever leaving the Equestrian capital. After making off of the ponies, I would detonate an anti-magic bomb to level Canterlot. Not a single soul would have caught wind of who caused it if it wasn't for a small miscalculation. <sighs> small miscalculation, my flank. Twilight growled, barely keeping her thoughts on the link. Salandra shared Twilight's anger, but not for the same reasons. That doesn't excuse your actions. The two princesses of Equestria know of us now. We can no longer slink into the shadows and let time wash away their memories. As punishment for this, I'm severing the bonds that you share with Elindris and Jistrul. A collective murmur of alarm and shock resounded through the chamber, before Salandra silenced it with a gesture. Never would I have imagined that one of our own would be so foolish as to execute a large-scale invasion on a national capital. Did you even have a contingency plan, or were you just so drunk on stolen love that you could never consider failure being a possibility? Chrysalis smiled viciously. Actually, the plan I just told you was the contingency plan. I wanted to thrust us into the spotlight. The surprise from before redoubled at Chrysalis' conceited smirk. Salandris' tone grew caustic. Explain yourself before I have you and your hive declared rogue. Chrysalis' smug grin fell at the threat. Twilight turned to Kadista, who was wearing a sly smile. Is there something I'm missing about going rogue? Chrysalis is one step from being declared unfit for her crown. That means her lands, hive, and life will be forfeit if the majority agrees with Salandris' ruling. The problem is, Chrysalis holds sway over many of the queens, and I think the order to sever her bond with her sisters is going to be ignored. Chrysalis flew into the air. How long have we shied away from prying eyes? We feed on the love of others like parasites, rather than the predators that we should be. Even in the short time I held Candlelight in my grasp, I gathered enough love to satiate my hive for five months. She cast a scornful glare at her enemies in the room, including a particularly nasty one on Twilight and Kadisa. If the Equestrians had done one thing right, it's raising livestock for their omnivorous neighbors. Why shouldn't we do the same? Kadista flew into the air to challenge Chrysalis. You would have us treat sentient life as cattle! Chrysalis sneered. Tell me already! The only difference is that our food is always let out to pasture when we could be milking them dry for every scrap of love they're worth. Kadista glared at the other queen, but Chrysalis spoke up from the other side of the room. You would reduce us to the very monsters that they believe us to be! Then we have nothing to lose! Yolindris called out from the sidelines. If we don't act quickly, the nations of the world will start ousting our collectors, and then, where will we be? We do the same as we always have done, called out another queen. Fade into the shadows and pretend that we never existed. Even the Aegis Halicorns will forget now that they've submerged themselves in the commoners' lives. It was the safest, most comfortable course of action, and most of the queens voiced their approval. Chrysalis let the others converse for a few minutes before throwing an accusatory hoof at Twilight. A shame that won't be possible, now with Celestia's prize student posing as a princess changeling. Twilight was already fuming at Chrysalis after her memories of the wedding had returned. She has some nerve. I am not posing! She barked, while her wings buzzed just enough to pick her off the ground for a few seconds. Kadista flew back to land next to Twilight. She was reborn into my hive as my heir. She is much of a changeling as any of us. Salandris didn't care for Chrysalis' attempt to divert blame. Kadista is known as one of the few who employs rebirthing, and the chamber's demasking aura would have stripped her away of any illusion magic. As such, I recognize Twilight Sparkle as Kadista's legitimate heir. Her tone soured. She has demonstrated foresight that you sorely lack, Chrysalis. There is something to be said about Celestia withholding her military. Chrysalis scoffed. Equestria's military, it's laughable at best! I was able to conquer their capital with half of an expeditionary force! We could crush Equestria before their griffin allies could set one claw in the jungle. Salandris, along with most of the other older queens, were unmoved as a tan royal shouted from the right of her. 
You do realize the Royal Guard is nothing more than a police force, don't you? Their military forces have been honing themselves in constant skirmishes against the Chaos Spawn Discord unleashed upon our world. If your infiltrators had bothered to go a few dozen kilometers north of Manhattan, you'd see where the bulk of the pony forces have been. Equestria is not to be trifled with. Crystal sneered. Then what makes you think that they would pull forces away from the Chaos Spawn? Just how far have you fallen? Cadiz the glowered. To think that enslaving the world in those barbaric cocoons of yours is justified. I concur. A light olive green queen named Therena replied. We take what we need from the other species and leave them to be otherwise. It never harms the other races to siphon love, and the longer our relationship with them remains symbiotic, the better for all of us. If you enslave the entire pony race, there would be no love left to steal. Your cruelty would be your undoing, Chrysalis. I for one am sick of being labeled as a parasite when we could be the predators. One of Chrysalis' supporters shouted back. Stop being so sentimental! The ponies only produce enough love for a hundred hives. With them under the lash, our race won't need to hide in the shadows. After three hours of listening to the Queen's bicker, Solandris was too hungry to bear it any longer. She grabbed a large stone gavel in her magic and slammed it twice upon the ebony floor. I am old and weary of this banter and I will suffer it no longer. Chrysalis, for the crime of breaking our most ancient and sacred defense, you are to be stripped of half of your lands and your hive is to be embargoed for no less than fifty years. She surveyed the gathered royals. All those in favor? Despite her vocal opponents, only half the queens voted in favor. The scant few princesses and proto-queens had no say in the matter, much to Twilight's chagrin. Zalandris hid her displeasure behind her neutral mask. Just how far is our kin fallen to harbor such disregard for the lives of other species? We are at an impasse. One of the dissenting queens spoke out. I believe her methods were out of line, but she brings up critical flaws in our traditional stance towards other nations. A 30-year embargo is more just. Zalandris felt that was tantamount to a slap on the wrist, thanks to Chrysalis's hive being self-sufficient. This was why she wanted to strip Chrysalis of her territory, but there was nothing she could do. All in favor? More than half, Chrysalis included, voted for it. Salandris barely kept her disgust in check. Then, it is decided. As for our stance towards the other races, we must enact damage control. I will have my drones spread misinformation among the populace and keep the identity of the real culprits from ever spreading beyond equestrian borders. She addressed Kadista next. You and your heir already have the ear of the equestrian princesses. Let them know that we police our own, and find some way to have them minimize our involvement with the Candelaf fiasco. I don't care how, just make it happen. Cadiz didn't glide her head. I have no objections. I do! Yolander shouted. She'll set up a nice treaty with Equestria for more power. She's already got Celestia wrapped around her hoof after absconding with her former pupil. Cadiz glowered. Well, maybe if you hadn't been stupid enough to attack her in the first place. Yolander's returned her hate-filled gaze. You have no proof of that! Twilight noticed Chrysalis' spiteful glare shift towards her younger sister. Interesting. Might I provide a solution? Chrysalis called out before flying into a hover on the south side of the room, after Chrysalis returned to her seat. Cadiz's brood already looks fairly ponyish. I move that she be our public face to the Alicorns. She can claim to be the real changelings, while Chrysalis and her ilk are degenerates that have long abandoned the true way. Then we can pass off any future sightings as part of Chrysalis' feral brood. Given that she'll be the one placating the Alicorns, I think it's only proper that she'll be able to sign whatever treaty is necessary to keep the peace. Twilight watched as the queens either silently brooded or murmured to each other about the idea. Her gut churned as Chrysalis' scowl slowly turned into a feral sneer. The Ebony Queen stood up. I have no objections. Zalandris brooded for several seconds. If both of them are agreeing to this, then there's no need for a vote. Then it is decided. I call the summit to a close. The gathered royals departed quick, if for nothing else than to eat. Chrysalis flew over to speak with Kadista. Darling, it's been far too long! Kadista smiled warmly. That it has. Why don't you join me on the deception for lunch? Chrysalis sneered. <laughs> Not a chance. You provided the last dinner date that we had. Now, it's my turn. We'll speak again, huh, Fluffy? She leaned in and whispered. I'd rather not catch up on old times with Sticky Spitz Posse still around. Kadista nodded in agreement. We'll join you now, then. I'll have my ship right alongside yours. She turned to Twilight. Do you wish to come as well? I'd love to see how a different hive lives! Kadista smiled at Twilight's eagerness. Then, let's go. I don't know if it's just me, but that summit didn't seem as intense as I thought it would be. Anywho, let's get on to our comforting donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, Jay Tinman, Darkseid, and only one thing. 
Taco Cat 598, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyra, Chris, Twinkie, Dosbo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Rinse Ithan 852, Madman's Den, Wazzy Perkett, Trick Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line Got 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hudzaza, Convair, and many more beautiful people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.